Hello and welcome to my channel. Um, I shall be reading you a one, well, roughly 1,000 word story. Sorry, I'm just untangling my microphone cable. Um, roughly 1,000 word story based on five random words as ever. Excuse me. <laughs> and the words are And the story, um, which I'll tell you a little bit about afterwards, is number 86 and it's called The Singer. Having struggled for half an hour to get to sleep with an uncomfortably full stomach, Commander Gaius of the 12th Legion scouting party finally had to admit he'd overdone it. Earlier that day, his compatriot Augustus, chasing his rumbling stomach as much as his prey, had speared a wild boar to his fellow legionnaire's delight. The thirteen men of the advanced party had eaten their fill that night and toasted Augustus Prowess. Having been reluctant to overindulge at first, Gaius had been cajoled by his men to celebrate with them for once, not an attitude he typically favoured. He couldn't blame them though. They'd mostly walked their horses through dense forest for ten days, unable to find a rideable path. So far there had been no signs of the Dacian roads that featured on their maps. Their enemy had clearly hidden every trace of the ancient drove paths for fear of the legions finding another way to assault the Dacian stronghold at Sarmizigatusa. In recent years the eastern barbarians had launched an uprising against their Roman overlords and Trajan had dispatched his legions to put down the rebellion. The emperor's offer to every pagan people was always non-negotiable. Become an adopter of our culture, or live as a slave. Decebalus, the Dacian king, had sent back the Roman messenger who delivered this ultimatum, minus his tongue. The legion's favoured strategy was to attack the Dacian capital from three sides. Gaius's men were charged with finding a possible route for one prong of this trident assault, and report back to the 12th legion. The forests of Dacia were dense, dark and mountainous, and Gaius was sick of this dripping, eerie environment. He longed to return to his family home in Corsica, and maybe please his aged father by finally taking a wife. He was almost 35 after all, hardly a young man. Gaius lumbered to his feet, trying not to wake the other men sleeping by the campfire embers. Apianus was on sentry duty. He nodded curtly as Gaius set off to find a suitably distant place to relieve himself, somewhere with nice broad leaves, ideally. As he wandered in the direction of the small stream that skirted the edge of the clearing, Gaius held, heard an unexpected sound. Could that be singing? Yes, a female voice, high and young, singing something melodic and sinuous in a language Gaius didn't recognise. It must be Dacian, he re realised. He drew his gladius, which he had polished to a fine sheen earlier that day. The moon shone down into the clearing, full and pale as the snow that dusted the mountain tops. Gaius abandoned his bodily mission and crept towards the unseen singer, skulking through the shadows of the heavier, older trees. Suddenly he saw her and ducked back behind the bowl of an ancient oak. She was standing in the current at the foot of a small waterfall. She'd stripped to the waist and was washing long blonde hair under the icy water. Beside her on the bank was a basket half full of what appeared to be mushrooms. A little way off, a small pony was tied to a tree. The woman looked around twenty and was facing away from Gaius as he struggled with what to do. His mind raced with possibilities, none of them good. As Gaius was about to come to a decision, he heard another sound behind him, the cracking of twigs under heavy feet. Even without looking, Gaius could sense it was Augustus. He turned and there was the portly legionnaire looking for a safe place to squat. Augustus too had overindulged, evidently. He hadn't seen the Dacian girl, and she hadn't heard him, presumably because the waterfall masked other sounds. Gaius had to decide what to do, and quickly. Duty told him he should capture the girl and interrogate her. The scholar of their party, Appianus, would know enough Dacian to get the truth out of her. But Gaius had seen what a sex-starved and war-brutalised party of men can do to a young girl caught by herself in the middle of nowhere. It was an ugliness he could not abide. Still, he couldn't cry out to warn the girl or move from his hiding place for fear of alerting Augustus, who would surely soon see the singer. Gaius looked down at his blade, wondering if he should just creep up and slit her throat 
to save the girl the unspeakable brutality that would otherwise await her. Of course, he could not and would not do so. The violence was habitual to Gaius, but not sadism or empty slaughter. A moonbeam glanced across the blade and momentarily startled him. He deflected it onto the trunk of a nearby tree. An idea formulated. The girl was still singing, facing the gushing stream of icy water. Gaius tilted his blade and bounced a beam of light across the forty feet separating him from her. Glimmers slid across the dark rocks, flanking the waterfall. Finally, Gaius bounced a beam strong enough to draw the girl's attention and make her turn. Gaius moved into the light and put a finger to his lips. The girl, startled, saw only the blade he held under the moonlight. She pulled her shift back over her and grabbed something from behind the basket, lifting it to her shoulder. Gaius took a moment more than he ought to to figure out what the object was. Then a slim bird darted across the water and struck his chest, throwing him to the ground. An arrow! Gaius yelled out to Augustus, who huffed over as the girl leapt upon her pony and galloped away through the trees. A Dacian! Should I? said Augustus, torn between his fallen commander and the enemy. You'll not catch her. Let her go. Augustus frowned, crouching to examine the shaft that protruded from Gaius' shoulder. We can track her, find her people. Maybe, groaned Gaius, feeling a sharp shock of pain as Augustus touched his wound. Be careful, man. I'll rouse the others. Can you stand? Gaius pushed himself up against the oak trunk. You'll do nothing of the sort. We need to head back to the legions. We cannot go this way. The forest is too dense. Let's leave the wilderness to the Dacians. Or burn the damn thing down, I care not. Augustus looked baffled, but helped Gaius find his feet and began to lead him back to the campsite. Gaius paused briefly to listen. Could he hear a song floating through the moonlit forest? A strange, ephemeral thing, telling of a people who would not willingly be subdued. No, he was being fanciful. All he heard was the trickling of the stream, the mutterings of his lieutenant, and the pounding of the blood in his eardrums. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, some of you may know that um, a while ago, a long time ago, 10 years ago now I guess, I wrote a script, a feature film script called Legion, which was set in Dacia, which is now Transylvania. And um, that script um, did surprisingly well, briefly. I got it to um, Escape Artists, who are a division of Sony Columbia, and it made it up sort of two stages in the approval process before it was eventually battered back. But um, people seem to enjoy it and I just have no way of knowing how to get it to the right people. But this story is sort of like a spin-off with the, some of the same characters. Um, so if anyone, if anyone wants to read the script or know somebody who might, um, get in touch. But that was fun writing that and who knows, maybe I'll rewrite Legion as a novel one day. Um, might not be such a bad idea. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. If you did and you haven't subscribed, why not? What's wrong with you? Um, you can share this, you know, share the link with your friends, um, tell other people. Um, and I will keep reading these stories because, frankly, I cannot be stopped.